Hi guys, um, Miss McDonald's here. I'm just going to give you a really quick run through of some acrylic paint basics um, that I know a lot of you have been asking me for or you've been showing me work that you've done with acrylic paint and asking me how you can improve it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run through some basics just to give you some tips and tricks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I lay out my colours when I'm mixing lots of different colours and um, have a little bit of each on the palette. If you don't need all of the colours and don't put them all out, um, it's entirely up to you. Um, but I'm going to start off by um, showing you the mistakes that I'm seeing quite often um, and how to correct those if they're the mistakes that you are making in particular. And um, So the first thing that I see is students going in with a dry brush so they're using a paintbrush that has no water on it whatsoever um, and they're starting to paint with that. So if I just come in for some of the red, just straight out of the tube and I'm just going to start painting like a, say a rectangle or a box over here. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing quite a lot is these these feathered outlines. Um, so it's not nice and smooth, it's not nice and accurate. I've got lots of texture going on, lots of brush marks and lots of feathered edges. Um, that's what we don't want to see at this stage. And the best way to stop that from happening is to take a little bit of the colour that you're going to be using, like the red, and introduce a little bit of water. We have gone over this, but just introduce a little bit of water. So that might just be wetting your brush ever so slightly and mixing it in. Now this isn't watercolor paint, so you don't want loads of water. It's fi finding that right balance between it being wet enough that it's glossy to work with and it's smooth to work with and paint with, and it's not dragging on the paper. Um, but then also you want it to still keep that intensity and it not become watered down and uh, so I'm going to take that once I've mixed it you need to make sure you mix it thoroughly I don't want a little puddle of water in the middle and then twist my brush off and then I use the tip just to pick up a bit of paint and I'm going to do the exact same thing now and um, but this time I'm going to draw my box with the tip of my brush and then I'm going to fill it in now if you get to the point where it is going dry and bristly come back for more paint Keep those edges nice and sharp. Come back for more paint. I don't know whether it's a teenager thing. No offense, guys. Um, but there tends to be a little bit of laziness when it comes to having to go backwards and forwards to your palette. Um, students really like to just slap the paint on as quick as they can and get the job done. But actually, by doing that, you're, the effect that you get in, it's not good enough. It's not going to be a smooth and clear application. It's not going to look anywhere near as good. Now, the beauty of acrylic paint in comparison to watercolour is a lot of you found when using watercolour, you would try and paint over the top again and again and again. And what you'd find is that you would ruin your painting or you'd destroy the top layer and you'd get all those sort of like um, bobbly bits rolling up on top that look like when you've rubbed out that's because you're wetting the page too much. Now, the good thing about acrylic paint is that you can work on top of the area again and again and again. So like this bit here that I've just painted, there might be some brush marks that you can see. There might be a bit of texture or lumps of paint and things like that. I can go back over the top of that with more paint and I can refine it and neaten it up, make it nice and uniform. So there's no dark bits and light bits. It's just nice and neat. And paint all of that in. And it's not going to destroy the top layer of my paper. It's just going to give me a really nice, intense colour payoff rather than the dry bristles that we're getting over here. So that's just by adding a little bit of water into the mix. Okay, so you can do that with all of your colours. And that's especially handy when you are painting in fine detail. So I'm going to show you painting in fine detail. So if you're doing like eyelashes or eyebrow hairs or um, anything like that, you're going to want to have a lot more control over your paintbrush. And you're going to want to have a lot more control over your paint, more importantly. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a little bit of black, separate it away, get some water on my brush and mix it in. Really mix it thoroughly. It'd help if that was on camera so you can see. Really mix it in thoroughly. I'm twisting the brush off every now and then. And um, that's a really good technique for mixing, but also regaining control over the bristles on your brush. So if you twist it off, you can twist it back into a point rather than just being like lumped with paint. So give it a good, really good mix. So I'm gonna twist off, so I've got my point, and then I'm gonna come back and get some paint on the tip. Now, we have spoken about this before, where if you're painting in fine detail, you want to hold the brush down here on the metal tip um, and you want to try and paint lines as thin as you can. Now the trick to painting a thin line is not allowing the bristles to bend. We have spoken about this before, but as soon as you allow your bristles to bend, that's when you get a thin line. Whereas if you allow them just to ever so slightly, I'm just gonna dab and get a bit more paint. You literally just let them touch the paper and not bend. That's when you can get thinner lines. That's when you can have more control over things like eyelashes. If you're painting eyelashes, things like that. Okay, they're not perfect, but you know what I'm getting at. Okay, so that's painting in detail. And that's for any of those colors that are on there. Um, it's about having the right consistency, but then controlling your bristles at the same time. So consistency and bristle pressure, they're gonna be the key to painting in detail. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna to speak to you about is color mixing. And you've got to think here quite a lot about ratio. Um, so depending on the color that you want to mix, you need to think about what is the more dominant color. So for instance, if I want to mix a very, very pale blue, and I want it really pale, I'm only gonna need a tiny bit of the more dominant or, st or stronger color, the more pigmented color. So in this instance, that's gonna be the blue. So I want, I'm gonna start off with 100% white and then I'm going to add in literally a tiny tiny dot on the very very tip of my brush of blue into that and see where that takes me. Now the chances are it won't take me very far and it'll just be a slight tinge of blue in there if anything at all but at least I know what I'm dealing with pigment wise and I can come back for a little bit more and I can mix that in. Make sure to scrape it all in. Twist your brush off, because we said that helps when you mix in. And then remix. What I don't want to see when you're mixing colors is you're painting the entire palette. The thinner you allow your paint to go on your palette, the quicker it's gonna dry. So you want to keep it in this contained area by brushing it back into the middle, twisting your brush off, and remixing like that. Now what I've got there is a very, very Pale blue, I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of water just to loosen up so it's a bit easier to paint with. We've got a very, very pale blue. Okay, I'll just do a quick swatch. These swatches when you were doing colour mixing, if I did a colour swatch now, I can cut this out and put that on my design sheet because that's me experimenting with the paint and the medium. Now I'd like my blue to go slightly darker. So again, I'm gonna come in for a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same thing. Because we're talking about highly pigmented colors or more dominant colors, if you put too much blue in to start off with, you will be adding white for days to try and lighten it and trying to get it to the right color. Um, and that will never work. You'll just waste paint and you'll end up with a huge mound of acrylic paint when really you only need a tiny little bit. So my advice to you is if you add too much blue accidentally, start again. So again, next blue down, it's gonna be here. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going, mixing my blue in at a time, twisting my brush. I'm gonna add a bit more water because again, it's dried up a little bit. Loose it off. Okay. 
and so on and so forth. You're obviously going to be a lot neater with your colour swatches than I am. I'm trying to do a demo and I don't want you sat here watching it for days. I think a lot of you will switch off by that point anyway. But there we go, we're working our way into a light blue. And you would keep going until, keep swatching, keep testing your colour until you get to the colour that you want um, or the colour that you would like to have. Now, there's different ways to create tints, shade and hues. I'm going to do a completely separate video on that. But absolute basics of mixing just two colours. Um, and I'll show you really, really quickly mixing an orange. And I'll save the tints and hues for another video altogether. Um, but I'm going to mix an orange. So we've got two colours here separately. I've got to work out in my head which of these do I think is the more dominant, the most pigmented colour. Um, and I think that it's going to be the red. Well, I know it's going to be the red. Um, the yellow's a lot lighter. It's a lot paler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yellow to start off with. Oop, move it away. And again, I'm going to start off with literally a tiny, tiny bit of red just to see where that takes me. Now already the difference just with that tiny tiny bit of red that I added is is quite drastic. So I've already got a very yellowy orange there straight away. What you will notice with the yellow is it is a lot more see-through and you can see a lot more brush marks with it so it just needs layering a couple of times. I'm going to add a little bit more red and again, even just with that tiny bit of red, we've automatically gone to a much brighter orange. See how, how, long, how much longer it took me to get to this sort of blue with the white and the blue. Whereas with the red, because it's so pigmented, even just adding the tiniest little bit gives me a lot of colour payoff. So just be aware of that. And this is why we do the swatches and this is why we add just a little bit at a time because all of the colours react completely differently to each other. And until you are like super confident painting and you paint all of the time, you know exactly how the paints are going to react with each other. Until you get to that stage, it's always better to test and to have your swatches. Like I said to you, these swatches here, cut that out nice and neatly either on a guillotine or pair of scissors and put it on your design sheet. That's worth lots of marks, okay? Um, so we're going to leave that there. Make sure that you watch the next video, which is going to be about tints, hues and shades. And I'll go into those in a little bit more detail. Um, but for now, I hope for some of you, that's just absolute basics of um, acrylic painting. Be good. Be safe, guys.